Hello viewers, welcome to Mojo for Industry. And we are today privileged to host Mr. Shantun Roy, who is the CMD of BEML. You very recently took over as uh, CMD of uh, BEML. And uh, well, today we are talking about the mining equipment industry. Globally, if you see that uh, mining equipment industry is not doing that great, how do you see the Indian market? What, what's your assessment? The mining sector as such is not doing too bad. The global coal projections, uh, it is grown at uh, a CAGR of around 8% as compared to last year. And from 23 to 27, it is further expected to grow by 7%, uh, a CAGR of 7%. It is not bad. Coal extraction is still going on. Coal as uh, affordable fuel is undisputed. And uh, overnight, we cannot switch over from coal to clean power because coal provides the base uh, power requirement. Uh, until and unless we have adequate uh, storage uh, solutions and uh, uh, till, till that time at least uh, the dependence on coal will be there as can be seen from the India market also. The India scenario is that last year the total Indian coal production was 893 uh, million tons. This year the production is going to cross 1 million uh, tons, out of which Coal India share will be around 78%. In the next two to three years, with the PLI which is on the anvil and with the focus of the government on underground uh, coal mining, uh, where incentives uh, are being offered to the private uh, uh, developers, uh, the idea is to meet the total coal demand in the country that is around 1.5 billion uh, tons uh, through uh, indigenous coal production itself and at the same time uh, because of the sustainability issues now the thing is uh, everyone is looking at climate smart mining if you, if you look at coal india so coal india is trying to leverage the eco friendly uh, mining technologies for the uh, extraction of coal and in that, uh, basically, the thrust on underground mining is one of the major steps. Today, uh, the coal production from underground mines is around 25 million tons and uh, Coal India plans to enhance it to 100 million tons by 2030. And we all know that underground mining solutions are uh, an answer to sustainable coal production, coal extraction, because it does not involve any kind of uh, displacement of people. It does not involve any kind of deforestation. So that is probably the future of uh, coal mining. And so coal is definitely there, uh, uh, there to stay. Uh, at the same time, reducing the carbon footprints while ensuring that the mining production, the coal production goes up. It's one of the focus areas. Right. So when you are talking about the green and sustainable mining and reducing the carbon footprint, uh, did you launch or rather introduced any new uh, mining solutions? You see, we have uh, uh, basically three uh, focus areas as far as the sustainable solutions are concerned. One is electric. We have already introduced the 100 ton and 180 ton electric ex excavators. Uh, Number two is the emissions. We have already developed in-house a CEV stage 4 engine for 140 bore size. And we are working on further uh, uh, engine requirements which can be upgraded to CEV stage 4 and subsequently to BS6 norms. Our third is our contribution towards renewables. And in renewables presently, we have a 23 megawatt uh, wind generating unit and we have a small solar generating capacity as well. Uh, put together uh, with these uh, two uh, facilities, we are able to meet 91% of our captive uh, consumption through uh, green energy, uh, which leads to a saving of around 24,000 tons per year. Apart from this, we are also contributing uh, a huge number to the carbon reduction by way of our urban mobility solutions in the uh, by way of our metro coaches and our electric trains uh, which leads to around 4.7 million tons of carbon reduction per year so these are our sustainability initiatives uh, in this uh, <clears throat> to take it further forward we are planning a 10 megawatt uh, wind generating unit and a 2 megawatt solar uh, power plant to further augment our 
uh, uh, our commitment towards environment sustainability towards our ESG goals. Right, so you very recently took over as the CMD of BEML. Uh, what kind of objectives you, are, you have? My objectives are very clear. There is only one objective and that is growth. Growth of the company, growth in terms of the revenue, which will automatically lead to the improvement in other financials like the EBITDA, like the uh, uh, return on capital employed, uh, like the gross margins. Everything will uh, be uh, will look the right thing if we are able to grow. And uh, growing at 20% CAGR year on year is what we are aspiring at. And that growth is basically based on the three strategies. One is a survive, surviving the present downtrend that we have faced last year. In spite of the industry growing in double digits, we had a 7% dip in our uh, top line. Number two is revive, that is the revive our uh, core capacities, our core competencies. And third is uh, thrive. Once we consolidate our core competencies, we have to thrive on it. And at the same time, we have to diversify, diversify organically, and then maybe diversify into new areas. That is the strategy. Could you be very specific about the new areas of diversification? You see the new area, as we discussed today, uh, one of the new areas that immediately comes to my mind is our foray into underground mining. It is very clear that uh, the future focus of uh, the mining companies will be on underground mining. And uh, presently, we are not in the underground mining segment. In fact, we are the only uh, PSU which is in the heavier moving uh, segment in the open cast. And there is not a single PSU which is present in the underground uh, equipment manufacturing segment. So to uh, you know sustain our uh, portfolio, we have to uh, diversify to underground mining equipment. And for that, we have uh, various strategies. We are working on various strategies, maybe joint ventures, uh, technology collaborations, or contract manufacture. At the same time, in the rail segment, we are looking at aluminium cars which is going to be the future. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, defense, uh, we have the core uh, capabilities of uh, the high mobility vehicles, the armoring, uh, number three is the engines, and number four is uh, the bridging systems. And uh, we want to further diversify into the related areas, for example, the land systems, the future land systems, which are coming up the new generation land systems, as well as the engine development, the power pack development for the land systems. One last question to conclude, sir. Uh, when, when you are talking about the growth, uh, your uh, defense as well as railway and, uh, railways remains the key growth drivers, and the mining is also not that insignificant. insignificant. So what is going to drive the growth during your tenure? The major uh, growth drivers that I can see is uh, uh, the railway and the metro sector and the defense and aerospace sector. And uh, mining also will continue to grow. Uh, as of now, mining contributes around 50% to our top line. But in the next five years, what I can see is that mining uh, will uh, still be contributing as a single vertical, the highest uh, contrib percentage contribution, around 30-35%, whereas the balance 60-65% uh, will come from the rail metro and defense aerospace. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. And thanks for your time, sir. For more updates, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon.